from a Cambridge city councillor to a Cambridge resident. He's also a member of Transport 2000 as well as HighSpeedRail.ca. He is Paul Lang and joining us in studio. Thanks for being here, Paul. Hi, Mike. What do you make? Let's let's just go back uh, for a moment to Councillor Tucci's proposal about uh, tolls on the 401 and only implementing them once transit links are in place. What what do you make of the transportation links we have currently between Waterloo Region and the GTA? How well are we doing? Well, two things. One is I appreciate Ben suggesting something that's a little bit out of the box. You know, thinking a little bit different than we've been thinking the last 50 years. Um, because the situation here now is, as you know, pretty pretty abysmal. And um, I mean, I've had to go to Toronto recently, and basically I'm taking that Greyhound bus in just because of when I have to go in. And the frequency of service is there, but you're on the same 401, so when it's shut down for two hours because of an accident, the bus doesn't get a, a pass. So it's a pretty grim situation, and it's really hard to find that in other modern countries in the world where they're so backwards in transit as we are here in Canada, in Ontario. And is that really what the problem is? And Ben and I talked about that a little bit. I said that we are in a car culture and we have really created this mess because I don't think we gave enough thought to mass transit as we planned. Is that accurate? Oh, it's very much so. And in fact, unfortunately, this culture has been manufacturing itself since 1958 when we started putting in the Miracle 401. So we almost have a generation now of people that don't know there was an option or don't, if, unless they've been to Europe or been to another country, where they can see a viable option. Quite often when I give educational presentations, it's on the most basic concept of here's what a modern vehicle, rail vehicle looks like, light rail or high speed, whatever, because people here cannot acquaint to anything other than getting uh, on the road with their car or a bus, which unfortunately since 1958, that's what we've been doing, tearing up the rails, adding the lane as you mentioned, and saying, okay, well, if you can't afford a car, you get in the bus for the poor people. So if it's been since 1958 that we've yes. been creating this monster that is the 401, does that suggest then that we are 50 years away from reversing our car culture? Well, I, I just try to point out to people that when we're going to change, whether it's inner city with this light rail idea or our GO trains to Toronto, that it's going to take time to join the rest of the modern world because we're so far behind because we've built these cities and these regions around the car that it's very difficult to make it a viable option to take rail transit in. But what I try to tell people and try to educate people, it, it is possible. And let's not think that because now it takes an hour and 40 minutes to go from uh, Guelph into Toronto or Kitchener into Toronto, that we can't, we can do this under an hour. Yes, we can. The rest of the world does it. So I try to educate people that it's we can do it and, and there are some signs that things are turning around as you've mentioned about the GO trains. Right. Let, let's talk about a couple of those initiatives that uh, seem to be moving us in, in a better direction. I would call mm -hmm. it the right direction quite mm -hmm. frankly. Uh, and let's start with the inner city mode, uh, the light rail transit sure. system that's being talked about, the rapid transit system sure. within Waterloo Region. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you make of this proposal? Three hundred million dollars behind it now. Uh, mm -hmm. That's barely enough to get it started as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. but. Ultimately, there is a vision to link Waterloo Region with some form of light rail. Okay. Is this a viable option? Well, two things. One, I just want to point out that for the longest time, people would say, well, you don't have the population to put into light rail. Well, that was one of the biggest, uh, shall we say, uh, misleading statements from road consultants <laughs> for decades. Uh, for instance, in France, if you have a population of 100,000, they say put in your light rail that determines development, okay? Makes sense, so for instance, Guelph would be perfect. And I suggested that to Guelph five years ago, now they're thinking about it. Kitchener, let's move on to Kitchener, they're putting it in, but unfortunately, they already got maybe in the Waterloo Region 500,000 people. They've already made the big sprawl. So it's actually late, and it's gonna make it a real challenge. So in Kitchener, the answer has to be, this spine better have connections that are unbelievable, or nobody's gonna take it. And so I wouldn't even approve the light rail system unless I saw the coordination with all the buses and where all the linkages is. Because if you only had a spine in your body, it'd be a pretty funky body, okay? <laughs> so that's what I try to get across to people. We've, Kitchener, Waterloo, it's a not a great scenario because of the 50 years of, let's put the suburb over here, let's put yeah. it over here. In, 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 in where I live in Hespler, well, let's put the 401 here and, and you can never join, we can't even get across the highway by bike or walking. So I don't mean to get off topic, but basically that's what we're looking at. There's going to be a challenge in the Waterloo region. 
it's not just about one line down, it's about how it all connects in. Right, and, and is that vision in place yet? I haven't seen much of that. I've seen about, uh, you know, something along the lines of a main spike that will link right. the downtowns, or, you know, from Conestoga Mall to South Cambridge, but we, we haven't really started talking about those other branches that you're, talk, you're, you're discussing. No, we haven't seen how the, how the bus system's gonna connect, the interconductivity of the lines. Um, but I want to be positive here because sure. I made a presentation in the Regional Waterloo 10 years ago about their master transportation, master transportation plan. It had zero pages on rail. So when we think about 10 years later, now they're all hot to trot on inner city rail. The idea is right, but I just don't want to see it. You know, when it comes time to add, the, add our comments in as far as this, I'm going to come forward and say, hey, listen. We want to see the whole picture before we vote on this. Right. I talked earlier about the VIA train yes. system, and if you look at that as a commuter option, quite yes. frankly, I don't think it is one yes. uh, anymore, but I know you, I know Transport 2000 mm -hmm. remembers a time mm -hmm. when there were more trains coming out of Kitchener mm -hmm. every day, back and mm -hmm. forth between Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened to our service there? I mean, is this, again, going back to that chicken and egg phenomenon, people stopped riding, so the services disappeared. Right. What happened to those links? Well, again, I mean, there's, there's the political side, meaning for the last 50 years, you got elected if you announced a new road right before the election. So uh, then the second reason is, VIA, it's a fundamental flaw in Canada that freight gets priority. So that dooms VIA right away, right away. Even though Goddard's Exeter might only have four freight trains a day, if they want to slow down, VIA's behind them, it's a single track, you sit there, I mean, it's just doomed. It has to have its own designated railway. So those are two things in this area. Politics, the, the, the people in power all the way along, whatever, whatever level, weren't pushing for the trains. The people said, we want a new road, and VIA couldn't do better if they wanted to. Now, I'm not saying VIA doesn't have its own problems, because they do, but they, they were harnessed by the, the culture of the roads and also the, the politicians that, uh, uh, that didn't push for it. Do we have a hope of getting more trains established between Waterloo Region and the GTA on VIA lines without building another track, a separate track? Well, the good news about GO coming here, and there's, there's some pro cons too, but I mean the good news about GO coming here is they're fixing up the line to double track it. Okay, and there's some, a big bridge outside of Georgetown, huge amount of money, they're going to double track it. So we should have faster speeds, we're definitely going to have more trains. Um, VIA still has the problem that it's too expensive for the ordinary person to go. I wanted to take my family to Winterloo in Ottawa last year with something like $600. Well, I, I couldn't afford it. Yeah. And I'm a, a, real, a real fanatic. So VIA has some fundamental problems in that they don't want certain clientele on their train. But as far as the technical aspect of it, when these uh, track renovations are done, wow. It's a, it's a miracle, really, that they're doing this, and I, I applaud the province for, for moving forward on rail. Right. You mentioned GO Transit, and, mm -hmm. and uh, Councillor Tucci and I were talking about that mm -hmm. earlier as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Another story making headlines last week is about better service between Guelph and the GTA, and mm -hmm. also uh, Guelph and Kitchener. Now, I get the sense, though, that if there are improved GO Transit links between Guelph and Kitchener, mm -hmm. uh, Cambridge is somehow getting left out of the equation here. Well, you're 100% you're correct, and, and Ben can tell you, I'm no Cambridge uh, cheerleader, but the bottom line is, um, it's only politics that Cambridge is not getting a GO train. And I want to make this very clear on your show, because people say, oh, well, can we do it, can't we do it? The GO trains used to sit in Campbellville overnight, about 15, 17 kilometers from Cambridge. It needed that track, double tracked, and then they could sit here on Franklin, off Franklin. Okay, it's, maybe it's 40 million, 45 million. Nothing compared to the 300 million for Highway 7. It didn't happen. In fact, the GO trains now don't even sit in Camelville. They've moved further east towards Milton. So they're even further away than Cambridge. The reason it doesn't happen is politics. And, and quite frankly, I'll give you a real easy example. We've elected a provincial member of parliament, Jerry Martinick, for a number of years. He was in the inner circle of Mike Harris government. We didn't get GO trains. We've elected him again. They're not even in power. We're not going to get go trains, right? And we can talk federally, regionally, municipally, but it's politics is the reason we don't have go train service to Cambridge. Okay? And it's politics is why they have it up in the North Main Line, which we call Kitchener Guelph.